we've brought our shiny new review copy of the Bentayga out to the beautiful, miserable British countryside. Right, is that all we're doing here? Just that I'm taking the lads to Laser Quest in town later in this and I didn't want to get it dirty like. Oh, look at the steer me shoes, man! You ready? So here then we have Bentley's new SUV, the Bentega. And never to be outdone, this Bentley's first SUV in fact is the most powerful, the most luxurious, the most exclusive SUV in the world. It's also the fastest. So in order to answer the question, what's so good about the Bentley Bentega, it makes sense to go through those four things. It's certainly the most powerful. This here is the W12 version. Now they do do a diesel too, but whatever. When Bentley talks about the most powerful SUV in the world, it's talking about this one. Six litres spread across 12 cylinders in a W formation of sorts, plus two turbochargers. That gives it an insane 608 horsepower and puts it way ahead of the Audi SQ7 and some way away from the most powerful Range Rover even, the SV. The only cars that can really run it close are the BMW X5 and X6M and the Mercedes AMG stuff but nothing breaks the magic 600 horsepower mark like the Bentayga does. Oh, and it's also got 900 newton meters of torque, torque being the thing that determines how quickly something goes. Now that number won't mean anything to you probably, but if I tell you that it's more torque than any Ferrari on sale, any Lamborghini on sale, and any Rolls Royce, you'll get the picture. The thing about the Bentayga, well, not the thing, but one of the things, is that it redefines the way quickness feels. So in a sports car, when your arse is down there, 0 to 62 in four seconds feels like your intestines are being turned inside out. But in this, the nose lifts slightly and all the stuff out here just goes a bit blurry. And you have to be careful with that because this thing goes to 187 miles per hour, making it the fastest SUV in the world. So Bentley's right about that bit too. Now I haven't done 187 miles per hour on this, but I'm guessing it'll feel like 37 miles per hour. Ready? Yeah, hang on a second. And that brings us to the second part of Bentley's big statement, most luxurious. Now it doesn't feel quite as vast back here as a Range Rover does, but it is about as palatial as SUVs come, or houses for that matter. Problem is, a lot of the stuff that makes it that way is on the options list, but we'll come to that later. Options or otherwise, these quilted leather seats are adjustable and have a massage function and are heated and cooled, and it's all controlled by this touchscreen. And these custom-made removable tablets are connected to the worldwide internet, somehow. Nothing that rides this high is as luxurious as the Bentayga's back seats. Well, this side of British Airways first class anyway. That's not just to do with the infotainment, it's due to good old-fashioned engineering. See, there's one reason why Bentley makes this. SUVs make money. That's the reason why Porsche has two sizes of SUV these days. Stay at the wheels, man. Gonna have to do something about this, like. The problem is, an SUV is designed to do one thing, go off-road. So you then have to shoehorn other qualities into it. So just like Porsche has to make its SUVs behave passably like sports cars, Bentley has to make its SUV behave passably like one of its big luxury saloons. And bloody hell it's worked. The refinement of this car is supernatural. At idle, the windscreen wipers are louder than the engine. And the silence is very nice. It's golden, you might say, but it's actually the way this car rides that makes it so very special. Now there's all kinds of electronic trickery happening under the wheels to keep this car level, but level it stays. Like you can even go over one of those 1980s spec Joyrider speed humps and it'll feel like being pulled over a small mole hill gently on an airbed. It's lovely. And because it's got a very sophisticated permanent four-wheel drive system and adjustable ride height, Bentley says it'll do the off-road stuff properly too. Are you going to show us that now? No, I'm not dressed for off-roading. Just hold still a second. What, what are you doing? No! Oh! <laughs> The base price of a Bentega W12 is that much. 
but this particular car is that much. Yep, that's 50 grand's worth of options. And unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that's great about this car is buried within that 50 grand. So let's go through a couple of those options. If you want your SUV to go off-road, you have to pay four and a half grand for all-terrain specification, which protects the underbody and gives you a few extra driving modes and stuff. This paint, even though it'll never be clean, this costs four and a half thousand pounds, but it doesn't extend to this part of the car, that's an extra grand. So if you want to talk bargain options, you have to come to the back. 650 pounds it is for a hands-free tailgate so that you can open the boot without using your hands and getting them mucky. And the fun continues inside. I've got a few of the options written down here because I'll never remember them. These blinds built in the door cards, they're 1,500 quid. If you want slightly thicker carpet mats, they're 300 quid, quite cheap. Mega stereo with a bit more bass, six and a half grand nearly. Uh, all these two non-iPads, five and a half grand for the pair, nice. And if you want a couple of veneered picnic tables, yours for 1,500 quid. But the single most expensive option on here is the four seat specification, but it means spending eight grand on making the car less practical. Firstly, because you can fit one less person in the car, of course, but mainly because you can no longer fold down the rear bench, which is, of course, one of the key benefits of having any hatchback. Or you can go the other way, pay for a seven seat option and turn this into the world's poshest MPV. So what does your 160 grand get you? Well, you might say in context, not that much. I mean, there's a lot of nice kit, but it's all the kind of stuff that you would expect in a mid-level executive saloon. So things like multi-zone climate control, touchscreen sat-nav, it's got a big panoramic sunroof, parking sensors, heated leather seats, obviously, and it's got gloveless gloves, they're nice, but it's not spectacular. Which brings us to the final quality that Bentley says it has exclusivity and it's not just about the breadth of options and colors and things otherwise you could say the same of a mini no it's really because of the way this thing feels it feels like it's been built by a small group of people and by hand rather than on a production line genuine exclusivity it's extraordinary and it's the first suv that you can really say that about see it's like it down there's people laughing at us but the hardest thing about doing this was actually not mention how ugly this car is. 